Welcome to the Sociology of Culture. This promises to be a very exciting semester, hopefully one of profound exchange regarding culture and cultural artifacts and the contemporary world of cultural and economic contradictions. Today's New York Times provides numerous examples of the contradictions and contrast in the contemporary world. A village in China where food has been scarce, the art market, and the need for rules for auctioning its priceless artifacts. And the very next breath, the prevalence and acceptance of permanent temporary labor, and the increasing and imminently legal acceptance of gay marriage as a human right. Other stories not shown on the slides, the joy of dancing in Mali after the expulsion of Islamic extremist fighters, and the importance to the people of playing music and having a little fun following on the heels of a brutal imposition of repressive laws, an imposition that included stoning and amputations. The sociology of culture opens a vast and diverse field with numerous theories and infinite possibilities in human examples and experience. The real challenge in a field so vast is how to bring any meaningful inquiry into focus. What is culture? How should it be studied? And for what purpose? Hall, John Hall, provides five analytic frames. Institutional structures, cultural history and legacies, production and distribution, audience reception and effects, and meaningful and social action. The course outline, to a certain extent, follows landmarks in Hall's chapters, with substantive and theoretical supplements. The course is organized into three main sections, the creative self, cultural production and reception, and social context. We begin with an icebreaker centered on the work of Victoria Alexander and her modified cultural diamond, derived from the work of Wendy Griswold. We will return to this later in the semester. Right now, it's just the context for an icebreaker on artifacts and museums. Reflection and shaping are two key approaches to culture and cultural artifacts outlined by Victoria Alexander. Art reflects society, it mirrors existing arrangements, an approach perhaps most at home within the Marxist paradigm in which art is viewed as a superstructure. Art also shapes society. This shaping can be positive, as for example, in the uplifting effects of high art or the joy of music and dancing, or the significance of continuous study and reading of literature and source texts in ethics. But this can also be negative in ways, especially with mass culture, in ways noted by Adorno regarding mass culture and mass media during the Industrial Revolution, and the way in which these function to create a compliant workforce. But note most texts are out of date as soon as they are written in the new digital world. The impact of social media, blogging, and Twitter shape the current political scene in ways we have not yet fully grasped or analyzed. C. Wright Mills is our classic with the sociological imagination. Mills calls on people to develop a sociological imagination to identify connections between personal lives and the social historical context in which they live. The relevance of cultural symbols for Mills lies in their use to justify or to oppose the arrangement of power and positions within existing structural arrangements. Anne Swidler a contemporary sociologist of culture, notes the importance and significance of culture during times of unrest, social revolution, and war. Culture provides a map 
for interpreting and guiding meaningful action when the structural tools are not fully in place. Culture for Swidler and ways we will study later in this semester is assembled from a toolkit. Culture as a cognitive and emotional phenomena is a distinct subfield of sociology. It contrasts with even as it reflects and shapes structural features of societies and subcultural groups. The modified cultural diamond from Victoria Alexander's work was derived from the earlier work of Wendy Griswold in the cultural diamond. Many of you may have been introduced to the cultural diamond and global culture and diversity. The four points are art or the artifact, the creators, the society, and the receivers, plus the center, the distributors. These relationships shift in significant ways across different historical periods. And the distribution function is somewhat new. It stands perhaps in contrast to art and artifacts in earlier historical periods in Western Europe when works were largely commissioned and executed were executed and commissioned within parameters set by patrons. Hopefully the icebreaker will provide us with an opportunity to ground our conversations in tangible artifacts as symbols of values and ideas. It is my hope that the course site will be the site for the exchange of ideas, a place where we can discuss theories about culture and its various relationships to structure.